On to our second example. Uh, we have a cable TV company that's laying cable in an area between two uh, with underground utilities. And uh, they're trying to con connect two subdivisions across a creek that's 100 meters wide. So uh, they have to connect point Q and point P. So um, upstream, downstream, there's a 1,200 meters between them and 100 meters across the creek. So they have to um, have some distance underwater and potentially some distance under land. And as you might expect, it's cheaper to lay the cable on land than it is underwater. So it says it costs $40 per meter to lay the cable underground and $80 per meter to lay, lay, lay it underwater. So we're asked, what is the least expensive way to lay the cable? So in the problem here, we have to create a cost function. And we're trying to, of course, minimize the cost for this company. And the cost function will uh, depend upon the amount laid underground and the out amount laid underwater. So we're going to label a bit in our diagram here. I'm going to draw a line straight across here, which of course is 100, just like this is 100 here. And then along the edge of the creek here. Now, this dotted line comes into an arbitrary point somewhere between point P and this point here. And that would represent the underwater distance. Uh, this would represent the underground dif distance. So G represents underground. And um, since this whole distance across here is 1,200, in this triangle here, this side right here would be the full 1,200 minus whatever G is. So 1,200 minus G is the distance from here to here. So that's the underground distance, that's the underwater distance. Now, of course, as G becomes bigger, this side will get smaller. If actually G was 1,200, then this would actually be the underwater distance right here, straight across. So we're going to create a cost function here. And we need an expression for the underwater distance. So using Pythagoras' theorem, this side's 100, this is 1,200 minus G. Then the hypotenuse would be the root of, remember it's the root of, the two shorter sides squared and added. So it's 100 squared plus the 1,200 minus G side squared. So that's the underwater distance. Now the underground cost is, it says $40 per meter, and G is the number of meters underground. So we would just multiply G by 40. So that's the underground cost. The underwater cost would be this underwater distance multiplied by 80. So it's 80 times that underwater distance. So our total cost function, because there has to be, well, I guess it doesn't have to be underground. You could actually go straight from here to here, completely underwater. But you might expect that that's going to be more expensive, because it would all be at $80 per meter. So the cost to lay it as a function of g is the underground cost plus the underwater cost. So just the sum of the two costs. And if for some reason g works out to be 0 and we have to go straight across underwater, then the, this would just become 0 and that would be our entire cost right there. Now the interval upon which we're trying to solve this is g has to be some number to be, to between 0 and 1,200. Uh, g certainly couldn't be negative. So it's between 0 and 1,200. And it doesn't make sense for G to be more than 1,200. If G was more than 1,200, we'd actually be coming over here, and then we go across there. So that's why G, the largest value that G could possibly be is 1,200. Okay. Now, in order to, uh, we're going to differentiate and set this equal to 0. But I'll write the root as the power of a half first. And now I can differentiate. So the derivative of 40G would be 40. To differentiate this function here, we need the uh, chain rule. So the first of all, power on the outside. So the half comes down and multiplies by the 80 to give 40. And then we have what's underneath here in the white brackets. Subtract 1 from the exponent, 1 from a half, or a half minus 1 is negative a half. And then we multiply that by the derivative of what's in here. Now, the 100 square is just a constant, so its derivative would be 0. So we really only need to worry about differentiating this. So this is another power inside here. So the 2 comes down in front. There's that 2. And then 1,200 minus g, and then we do the power of 1. Remember, you subtract 1 from the exponent, so there's power of 1 here, 1,200 minus g. And then we multiply that by the derivative of what was in here, the inside most function. And the negative g is the only variable here. The 1,200, again, is a constant. So the derivative of negative g is negative 1. So that's the full derivative. That's all the differentiation. 
So let's simplify this. We have the 40 at the beginning, and I multiply this 2 by this 40, and also multiply the negative 1 in. So that's why this is negative 80. This will be in the numerator. It has a positive exponent. And then this whole thing, 100 squared plus 1200 minus g all squared, that's underneath the square root here, power of negative a half. So the power of a half means it's underneath the square root, and the negative means that big square root's in the denominator. So now we're running a room on this page. We're going to finish this example in the next page. And we're going to set that equal to 0. So we'll do that on the top of the next page. So there's the derivative set equal to 0. And think of that 40. And actually, we're going to notice that both sides here, the 40 and the 80, are both divisible by 40. So if we divide out the 40 from both sides, then of course this will be 2 up here. So now the 1 that's left on the uh, right side here, think of it as being under 1, 1 over 1. So I'm just going to cross multiply. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this root right here and I'm multiplying it by that 1, so that's what this is right here. And then this 1 will be multiplied by what's up there. So 2 times 1200 minus g times 1 is 2 times 1200 minus g. So I just cross multiplied. And now I want to get rid of this square root. So the way you get rid of a square root when you're solving an equation is to square both sides. So that's what I'm going to do now. So that is both sides squared before and then squared. So if I square the square root, that gets rid of the root on the left here. So we have just 100 squared plus the 1200 minus g squared on the left. And then 2 squared is 4, and then 1200 minus g squared. Now, this expression here and this expression here are actually like expressions. We usually call them like terms, but they're not just terms. They're actually a, a binomial expression. So think of the uh, one on the left here as having a coefficient of 1. So when I bring this over here, I'm going to be taking one of these away from the 4 1200 minus g squared. And so that's why when I do that, I'll have 3 1200 minus g squared on the right. So I'm just taking 4 of those 1200 minus g squared and subtracting 1 away. So that's why I have 3 1200 minus g squared. Now I want to solve for g here. So I'm going to divide out the 3. Dividing both sides by 3, I get this. And I'm trying to solve for g, so the next thing I want to do is get rid of this square here. So I'll take the square root of both sides. So the square root of this, and of course the square root of uh, this is what I have here. Now the square root of the square, the square root and the square just, just uh, cancel one another out. Uh, so we actually end, or end up with 1200 minus g on the right. And the square root of 100, of course, is just 100. 3 isn't a perfect square, so we'll have the root of 3 in the denominator. Don't forget there's, a, there's two roots here when you take the square root, so that's what the plus or minus is about. Now I'm trying to solve for g here, so I'm going to rearrange and bring the g over here and this over here. So then g will equal 1200 plus or minus, now you actually write, you could write minus or plus I suppose, but plus or minus 100 over root 3. Now if you uh, evaluate 1200 plus 100 over root 3, you get 1258. And if you do 1200 minus 100 over root 3, you get 1142. Remember, this number is not within the interval we're asked to solve this on between 0 and 1200. So we'll discard the 1258. So what we want to do now is check the cost for 1142, 0, and 1200. Remember, 0 and 1200 were the interval upon which we're searching here. So we'll find the cost of 0 if we, uh, the underground distance is 0. So we're going completely underwater. And that works out to, if we evaluate this, $96,333. And then if we do the 1142, so 1142 meters underground and then a fairly short distance across the water, we get 54,928. And if uh, the other end of the interval was the 1200, so if G is uh, 1200, uh, the cost for 1200 is 56,000. So notice there's a really big difference between the uh, 0 and the 1142. So this is the best solution here. So the cheapest solution is to lay the cable 1142 meters underground and then directly across the water.